Yu-Gi-Oh! is not just a game, it can be a whole experience. Taking a new deck you've never played before, building it from the ground up and making it your own to eventually compete in tournaments at the highest level is just so satisfying to me. To truly get the full, authentic Yu-Gi-Oh! experience though, we're doing things the old-fashioned way. Our cards can only be obtained from inside a pack or by trading with fellow duelists. This time, we become the king of synchros. Welcome to Playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Properly Season 2. Aye. Subscribe. Yu-Gi-Oh! has changed. The release of Phantom Nightmare has opened the floodgates to a near tier 0 format because, I'm sure you've noticed, but fire decks are insanely strong. With the release of Snake Eye Poplar and Promethean Princess, there isn't a single card you can play that just completely kills the deck outside of maybe Shifter. In the last episode, we bombed a regional, but what if I said we're sneakily hitting up another regional in this episode right at the beginning of the Phantom Nightmare format? If we want to have any success whatsoever at the UK Open next month, we're gonna have to figure out a way to navigate the Snake Eyes matchup, and what better way to get started than at a regional? There's a lot for us to figure out, but before we get into any of this, we got an opening to crack into, so drop the luck points, baby. Here we go. 12 packs of Maze of Melania. Now you might be thinking, we already have our Stone Sweepers. Why are we opening this set? There's nothing we actually need. There are some cards in here that are very high in demand, you know, Transaction Rollback, Triple Tactics Thrust, but most importantly, Bonfire, that card is super expensive, man. If we pull an ultra rare bonfire, which isn't short printed or anything, that's essentially like one or two cores traded for at least. And if we pull a collector's rare bonfire, which isn't gonna happen, but uh, if we did, we would pretty much be set for life in this series. But uh, yeah, 12 packs, half a box essentially. Let's get into it. I do already have the junk speeder. Uh, so if you pull the junk speeder, I don't actually need it. And it's also pretty cheap, so it wouldn't actually be that good of a pool. But anyway, let's see. We have Altergeist, Prime Banshee, Supreme Kinggate Zero, Supreme Kinggate Infinity. We have Earthbound, Linewalker, Dark Dragon Rebellion, Chimera, the Flying Mythical Beast, and first pool, Earthbound Servant, Geo Grasha. One dud, 11 to go, baby. Let's go. I forget how many Ultras were actually in a box in this set. Uh, I'm pretty sure there were increased rates compared to previous Collector's Rare sets. Uh, Sun God Unification, we have Azla Pisku, we have Triangle O, we got the Skull, and the, uh, is it, what is it, a mask, a shield? I don't actually know. Combat Wheel, we have Salamandra with Chain, Flame Swords Dance, and Ashoka Pillar. This is actually played in some weird... Adam Emancipator, Mechanco build. It's so funny, man. You just uh, excavate it off of an Adam Emancipator and then search for Mechanco equip. So silly, man. We have Altergeist, Sulcoitis, Synchro Chase, Salamandra Fusion, uh, Mag Magi Spectre Crow Yatta. Some of the Flame Swordsman stuff is still pretty expensive. So like worst case scenario, we pull a shit ultra, it's like Flame Swordsman, uh, which still has value to it. We have Geoglyph and Arcana Force, the flip flop coin flip card super rare three supers in a row man we, we got uh, we got to bump those numbers up hundred eyes dragon we have magic specter cyclone uh earthbound prisoner line walker what else do we have alert oh um also another reason we're opening this set is hydrant is a super rare and it's like eight pound so you know even just pulling a super rare hydrant is decent enough we have geo kraken uh we have rescue and at the back we have salamandra the flying flame dragon. How unfortunate, how unfortunate. Some of the cards are like, not stuck together, but it's really cold right now. It just snowed last night and my hands are like a little bit cold. So opening's a little bit awkward right now, but we don't care. Emergency, we got Triangle O, Supreme King Dragon, Clear Wing, Fighting Flame Dragon. We have Earthbound, Prisoner, Groundkeeper, Jet Synchron, and another Arcana Force 15. Is Hydrant short printed, maybe? Cause like, yeah, two hydrants or three hydrants in a box just doesn't seem doable. We have Earthbound, Geoglyph, Emergency, Burfomet. We have Salamander with Chain, Cabrera. Oh, it's a stone. That explains it. Cabrera Stone. We have a D Synchro, and dude, we're not seeing any hollow spells. At the back, we have Rescue Ace, Turbulence, man. If only this was the hydrant. If only it was hydrant, we would have had some value. So far, we're literally halfway through the opening. Pulled absolute dog shit, bro. <laughs> Extinguish. We have Altergeist, Meliseek. Alter gets multi faker, Salamander Fusion, D Synchro. <gasps> I see a spell card. Supreme King Gate Affinity, please, please. We have Flame Swords Realm, man. God damn, dude. 
Uh, super rare. Super rare. We're 7 out of 12. All supers. I think it's like a 1 in 8. An ultra is typically per box. So, yeah, we better pull an ultra soon. We have Reinforce, Geo Kraken, Horned Saurus. We have Gazelle, the king of mythical beasts. Millennium Revelation, Jet Synchron, and Catoptera. Yo, we got the dinosaur package in this pack. Bro, come on. Give us an ultra, man. Give us an ultra. Or a collector's. Even though half the collectors are dog shit. Uh, all right, we have D Synchro. Supreme King Dragon Dark Worm, we have Satellite Synchron, Altergeist Marionette, Doppel Warrior, Altergeist Hextia, and an Xyz Ultra Rare, number one, Infection Buzz King. How much is this worth? Honestly, I have no idea. Uh, I'm pretty sure I checked it recently and it was like at least a fiver. So yeah, maybe not terrible. I don't know. I don't know. We pulled an Ultra, okay? God damn. If only it was bonfire, bro. Uh, Altergeist Hextia, we have Rescue, uh, Magic Spectre Toad Ojama, or Ogama, Cabrera Stone, we have Full Armored Crystal Zero Lancer, Contain, and Arcana, oh, we got a playset of Arcana Force 15, man. You ain't getting a playset of Hydra. Not in a single box, that's for sure. All right, Sun God Unification, anything else? We have Altergeist Prime Banshee, Millennium Revelation, Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast, Magic Spectre Toad Ogama, Earthbound Servant Geo Gremlin, it's a spell. Come on, I swear to God, I, I, I'm i praying. I'm praying. Bonfire! Fuck! Earthbound Prison, bro. Oh, man. Okay, this is why uh, you buy singles, of course. Maze of Millennia. Let's see. Final pack. Can we get some last pack magic? I beg. Rescue. We have Altergeist Multi Faker. Synchro Chase. J.O. Gremlin. Code Hack. Supreme Rage. It's a spell at the back. Oh, my God. There's no way we get last pack magic. Come on, Bonfire, please. We have... Fuck you, dude. Earthbound Prison. We got duped by the spells once again here, man. Oh, wow. Okay, number one, Infection Buzz King. It's an ultra. I guess we'll, we'll take it. We'll take it, man. We'll take it. Number one. Not gonna lie, we did get a little scammed on the opening, you know, but uh, it's whatever. Anyway, we got some stuff to talk about. With the new fire decks in town, it's almost impossible for us to properly compete. The amount of non-engine we see in the meta right now just absolutely kooks our deck, especially with things like Super Poly gaining popularity, but we can't go about with a defeatist mindset, bro. We want to be the Synchro King. Up until now, we've been figuring out many different ways to build our deck and play around every hand trap under the sun, but what we haven't looked at is a full gas hand going uninterrupted. Usually our full combo is like Supernova and Abyss with Red Zone, or, you know, Abyss with Dispatter and Fiendish Golem, maybe with a Void Ogre on top, but it does get better than that. Let me introduce you to the God Hand. This isn't going to come up too often because not only does it require our opponent to have no interruptions, but it also requires us seeing four cards in hand. But it's nice to at least know what the deck is capable of. So the cards we need are Supe Duskwalker, Bone Archfiend, Crimson Resonator, and Vision Resonator. However, with the amount of different searchers and, you know, like Prosperity, Foolish, things like that, there's actually quite a number of different ways to get to this hand. All right, here we go. The God Hand, baby. If we see a hand like this this is a uh, virtually unstoppable like there's not a single card in the game that can just completely shut off this hand whether it be draw on the biru shifter super poly dark ruler none of those cards on their own can uh, stop this hand literally if you see a hand like this going first you're gonna win the game uh, so we are gonna start with our crimson plus bone line that's our most resilient line to start off with so special summon crimson resonator and normal summon bone arch fiend good old boner We'll synchro those two, four plus two, into our Red Rising Dragon, and Red Rising Dragon will summon the Crimson Resonator. From the Graveyard, we'll go Crimson Resonator effect, summoning out Soul and Synchron, and on summon, we'll activate the effect of Soul, adding Zalamander Catalyzer to our hand. For that playthrough, Nibiru, of course, as you've seen in previous episodes. Then from here, we are going to synchro everything into our Red Supernova Dragon assuming we don't get the B-Root. Uh, on resolution of that, Synchron is gonna, of course, add back the soul. Then we're gonna activate the effect of Catalyzer, revealing the soul, special summoning the soul, and discarding the Catalyzer. From here, we're then gonna activate the effect of Boner Engrave, sending our Vision Resonator to the Grave for Cost to special summon it. That's gonna trigger the effect of Vision Resonator to add Crimson Gaia to our hand here. Then we're gonna activate the second effect of Boner Target and Soul, dumping Uvia Loop and increasing its level to four instead of decreasing its level to two. So we have four plus four on the field right here. We are gonna synchro those two into our scarred 
Dragon Archfiend. Now this is where Supe is going to come in. We're going to activate the effect of Supe discarding the final card in hand to special summon herself and the Supe from the deck. We're then going to synchro those two into our second Red Rising Dragon. And Red Rising Dragon is going to target the Synchron Engrave to reborn it. Then from here, Synchron Resonator plus the Scarred Dragon Archfiend is going to make our Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss. We're going to go chain link one Synchron, target the Vision Engrave, chain link two Scarred to summon the Red Dragon Archfiend from the extra deck. So we're going to grab a Vision from the Grave to our hand here. And now uh, we're going to activate the effect of UV Loop in Graveyard. We're going to target the Red Rising. So banishing the Red Rising, uh, it's going to add itself from a Grave to hand. It will activate its effect in hand, targeting the Scarred Dragon Archfiend to banish it and special summon the UV Loop. And then we have a four tuner plus a six non-tuner Dark Dragon Synchro. That's going to make our Bestial Dispatter. We can activate the effect of Dispatter targeting the banished Red Resin Dragon to special summon it. Then we can special summon the Vision Resonator from hand and synchro those two into our Void Ogre Dragon. So we literally have like everything on the board here, dude. Uh, finally, we're gonna wrap things off by activating Crimson Gaia, and Crimson Gaia is gonna grab a red zone from the deck to the hand. We're gonna set the red zone and go to the end phase. Of course, Red Dragon Archfiend mandatory effect will activate. And we'll protect our board with our Soul Resonator in Graveyard. Now we pass to our opponent's turn. We don't immediately fire off the red zone. We wanna wait and see if they go for like a Dark Ruler No More. If they activate something like Dark Ruler No More, we can then chain the red zone and chain the Abyss, target the Dark Ruler to negate it. But uh, we can go red zone, summon back the Scarred Dragon Archfiend. And we have literally a whole board of synchros. Of course, the summon back on red zone is a once per turn. So if we want to save that for the second supernova effect, we can leave that. But uh, just in case we need to pop live and our opponent gets rid of Red Dragon Archfiend, we can you know summon this back, blah, 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 blah. But uh, yeah, so essentially, assuming we don't do that, we have a pop live on the red zone because Red Dragon Archfiend is on the field. We have a pop live with the Bestial Dispatter because we have at least Soul Banished. We have the Spell and Trap Negate with no cards in hand on the Void Ogre. Banish everything our opponent controls with the Red Supernova Dragon. We can of course summon it back and activate that effect again. And then we have the Negate with Abyss as well. But yeah, assuming draw phase, our opponent goes Super Poly. I guess he would probably get rid of like the Supernova and the Abyss. And then even then, we still have a pop on the red zone. We have a spell trap in the gate with the Void Ogre Dragon, and we have a pop with the Abyss Deal as Patter as well. So they're gonna struggle to play through this board no matter what they have. It's GG, man. It's the God Hand. It's the God Board. If we pull this off, we're cooking. Now, Snake Eye and Fire King Snake Eye. These decks are incredibly powerful because they can play around pretty much everything except Shifter, meaning you're usually going to need at least two pieces of non-engine in your hand to slow them down. Because of this, we've entered a bit of a hand trap format, especially when literally half of the entire Snake Eye's deck is non-engine. With the introduction of our little whale friend Stone Sweeper, our deck has become way better at comboing through interruptions on our choke points, but things can still get a little dicey when we're hit with multiple hand traps. One of the popular choices going into Phantom Nightmare format is main deck and Droll and Lockbird. If Snake Eyes start with something like Bonfire, Droll has the potential to completely lock them out of anything meaningful, and I'd say more often than not, despite our deck having a ton of searchers, we're able to combo through Droll pretty easily, so that gives me an idea. <laughs> First, we bait out a Droll with one of our Searcher cards, and then we Talent rip a card from their hand, either another Hand Trap or a Starter if they have no Interruption. After that, we know exactly how to combo and where to interrupt our opponent with perfect knowledge. For a format like this, we have extremely limited space for things like Hand Traps, but I think Talents is too impactful for us to not play in this meta. The other card I traded for is Soul Release. A lot of the Fire King Snake Eyes strategy is based around the Graveyard where they have Princess as an interruption, Garunix to summon back, two level ones for Flamberge to summon back. The idea is that shutting all of those off with a soul release could potentially be enough to take away their gas. The only issue is that it doesn't deal with what they have on board already, and it doesn't deal with their hand traps. Also, it has less utility into other matchups, so it's a bit of an awkward one. I don't know, this regional is all about getting a feel for the new format and allowing ourselves to figure out what needs to change leading up to the UK Open. With that being said, let's travel to Paisley Regional and see just how bad this format is actually going to be.
so it's currently the night before a regional and I am struggling to come up with the perfect list that will allow us to compete with Snake Eye Fire Kings because the set literally came out a couple of days ago. We already have a regional and obviously there's nothing really to go off outside of just OCG. But uh, the issue with our deck is that in terms of non-engine, we just don't have enough room to reliably kill the deck. But also we can't focus on a singular matchup too hard because if we then don't go against Snake Eye Fire Kings, our list will be suboptimal. And at the same time, we need to make sure that we're not messing with their actual ratios as well. So I am gonna try and figure some things out. I don't know if this is cope or not. It might actually just be cope. Ash in the side seems weird because it's got such good coverage, but like in the main against the best deck of the format, it just doesn't do enough. And because we can't reliably see two hand traps in our hand, it's not worth the risk of giving them a free Hita extender while also potentially playing into like a talents or something. So Ash in the side, I think maybe dude. Oh my God, I don't know. All right, I'll, uh, I'll come back with a list once I figure some things out. All right, so this is the list that I ended up settling on. We're not gonna go too in depth with it because we are just experimenting with the format, but uh, yeah, 41 cards, nine non-engine, Ash in the side deck, and that's pretty much the gist of it. Now, uh, let's get into the regional. Like I said before, we're just sneaking into the regional, so no filming or anything, but uh, round one, we get paired against Pure Centurion and lose the dice roll. Game one, we don't have a way to stop the Calamity Lock. I do try to Prosperity into like an Impermanence, but we don't see it and immediately just scoop on the spot. Game two, we get Drolled and activate Talents to rip a Super Poly out of our opponent's hand. From there, we then play through an Imperm to end on Abyss, plus our own Imperm, which is game on their one starter. Game three, we open double Imperm, Soul, Foolish, and Vision, but a single Imperm on Primera ends his turn. We top deck Ash and proceed to OTK through Droll. So we start off the regional with a 1-0 record, despite losing the dice roll, we're feeling good. Moving on to round two, we're paired against Vlad, AKA Hypnocorn, AKA one of the toughest opponents we could possibly be playing against right now. He's on Fire King Snake Eyes and wins a dice roll. I think I accidentally left Ash in the main instead of Droll, but we have no chance either way. It's a swift 2-0 to Vlad. Round 3, we finally get our first dice roll win against Branded with Puppet Lock. We get Belled on our Red Ryzen Dragon and activate our own talents to reveal talents called by Branded and Red and Ash. We shuffle away the Ash so we can play, and he has no starters, so... As GG. Game 2, we Imperm Alibur and get surprised with a Banishment, so it's a bit of a grind game, but Red Zone constantly being able to summon back whatever gets banished by Mirror Jade or Banishment eventually puts us ahead for the 2-0 dub. Round 4, we lose the dice roll to another Fire King Snake Eyes and see zero interruptions. Game 2, we do get drolled, but have talents to rip Snake Eyes Ash and pretty much win the game on the spot there. And then Game 3, he only sees the Fire King engine, so makes his way to a Heat Soul before passing turn. However, the Heat Soul draws him into Wanted, and that allows him to go full combo. The only non-engine we see is called by, which we eventually have to use on the Droll. So uh, yeah, the rest is too much for us to deal with. We're 2-2. Both losses have been to very competent players, so our tiebreakers are likely not going to be that bad. Meaning if we win out the rest of the regional, we could actually still top. So we'll see how it goes. Round 5, we're paired with Branded Chimera and win the dice roll. We go first and set up Supernova plus Red Zone and Abyss but we just lose to an Imperm and a Talents. Game 2, we both kind of brick, but we do eventually take the win. And then Game 3, he passes to Imperm, but our hand isn't great either. We do get interrupted and then use Talents to rip his only starter, so we eventually win that one as well. Round 6, we get paired against Manadium and we win the dice roll, so we're going first. However, we do get nibiru with a hand that can't really play through Nibiru. However, we have Droll in hand, so that shuts his turn down, and then we win on the follow-up. Game 2, he kind of breaks on Fenrir in two sets, so you love to see it. That puts us at a 4-2 record, and uh, with pretty good tiebreakers as well. So the final round of the regional, we're sat at table 8. Winning this match means we could actually squeeze in the top cut. Round 7, we're paired against Fire King Snake Eyes and win the dice roll. However... Both of our hands are like super awkward, we both just keep passing turns to singular interruptions and eventually he sees more starters than we do to take the win. Game 2, we are going uninterrupted, we're feeling good, we end on Supernova plus Abyss plus Droll in hand plus Red Zone. Surely this is a win, except 
Our man's is main decking Super Poly. This is game two, so he could decide to end, but he is main decking Super Poly. There's unfortunately just no way for us to avoid that, so we just hard lose to this card. And with Dark the Dark Charmer existing as well, the Droll doesn't matter, dude. We get OTK through Droll, and that's the end of the regional. 4-3 record, and we end up coming 26th out of 100 players, but uh, so close to accidentally topping if we had just won that last match, dude. <laughs> Not a bad performance, you know, 4-3, 4-2 going into the final round. So if we had went 5-2, potentially we would have got eighth place. So in a way, we almost accidentally topped a regional, just kind of figuring out Phantom Nightmare format. And obviously we need to figure out the matchup with Fire King Snake Eye. I think we want anti-spell and uh, we still need to figure out a way to win the game if we lose a dice roll in terms of main deck non-engine. But yeah, five packs of Phantom Nightmare. Let's see if we can pull any juice today. We have Raid Raptor, Noir Lanius, Boom Mac, we have Big Bang, Time Reloader, and we have Rise, Rank Up, Magic, Raid Raptor's Force, Super Rare, we got Stampede, a Swarm of Centipede, Swallows Carry, and Exceed. Yo, those kind of look the same, those spell cards. All right, pack number two, anything spicy. I don't actually know if anything crazy was pulled at the regional. There was definitely no like quarter century princess or anything. We've got Big Bang, uh, Summoning Beast, Noir Lanius, Raid Raptor Roost, and we have Goblin Biker Mean Merciless, super rare once again for the binder. Mystic Potato Baby with that ass chin. All right, pack number three, yo, quarter century, Poplar, let's go. We got Bagnawa, the Moon Eating Dragon. We can actually play this for time just as another seven, but I think our extra deck is maybe too tight to consider that. Uh, Royal Rhino with Deceitful Dice. I always thought he was sticking up his middle finger here. Not gonna lie. That's what it looks like right off the bat. Dark Guardian, we have a Geist Grinder Golem and a King of the Ashen City Super Rare. Yo, are we gonna go five for five on supers? Please give us an ultra. Two of the best cards in the set are Ultra, so, uh, you know, there's a chance, there's a chance we pull some absolute mad goo. Master of Ham, we have a Jongleur Ghoul Illusionist, Goblin Biker Boom Mac, Berserk Archfiend, and we have, dude, we're gonna get five supers! Psychic Arsenal, super rare, and our final pack. Last pack magic would be cool, but, you know, I kind of doubt it. Four at the front, let's see, what do we have? Whew, Tricorn. The Cacophonous Concert, Cacophonous Concert. Raid Raptor Glorious Bright, we have Xyz Force, Three-Eyed Ghost, Memento Talan, Ghost in the Attic. Time Reloader, Big Bang, Geist Grander Golem, and it is an Effect Monster, Super Rare Dude, Hero of the Ashen City. Five for five on Super Rares, Phantom Nightmare, you know, not coming in clutch for us, but whatever, whatever, let's move on. Having two episodes in a row without any actual gameplay just didn't sound too appealing, so this is from the start of Phantom Nightmare format as well. I hit up Daryl asking for a match against his Fire King Snake Eye deck. We're gonna need all the practice we can get against this best deck of the format, so let's see how it goes. We do lose a die roll, so we're going second, but yeah, it's time to duel. Uh, for all time I think you're good. Main phase. Yep. Yeah. We're also in Phantom Nightmare. Phantom Nightmare. Phantom Nightmare. I can face Yes, you're good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Bro, that's crazy. Yeah. 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 You got the Main phase. <laughs> Normal summon effect. So, in Are you hoping? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Res. <laughs> yeah, we'll have it. Okie dokie. <laughs> Special. Discard. Special. Uh, Scarred effect. Yeah. This is one a card that I'm to it. I can attach my condition. Time to go battle. And the main. Yep. <laughs> Chain. Target this. That's fine. 
Set one, set two. Over to you. Uh, drop her. Yeah. And now also the attempt attack. Chain target. That's fine. Uh, attempt angle attack? Yep. Uh, you can't summon back. Yep. Karen. Yep. Summon. I think one play dark, right? This is very cool. Yeah. Still in main Yeah, he should have won. I think not one yet. How's the dumb one? Dark 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 Climber to effect, target or discard, place in the small cover. Uh, there's a battle phase. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, I'm um, 18. Straight case. You may face two. Oh, let's go out of phase here. Sure. Draw for turn. Mm -hmm. Stand by man. Legendary pump. Yeah. Normal effect. Or black effect, can I do? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Uh, I'll go first. Yeah. Geo! Hey, Jeff. Alright, standby main. Yeah. Let's go Stone Sweeper effect. Add Crimson. Resolution. Yep. Uh, effect of special. Mm -hmm. Normal summon. Mm -hmm. Effect target Crimson. Yeah. Crimson effect. That's fine. Uh, resolution soul effect. Anything here? No. Uh, synchron effect target soul. Yeah. That laser effect reveal itself in soul. Someone has to discard this. Yeah. I'll go bone effect, sound fast. Yeah. Vision effect. Yeah. Uh, effect target soul. Make it level two. Yeah. Uh, effect target soul. Yeah. PV loop target red rising. Ooh. Take the imperm. Yeah. Some of this. Activate Gaia. Yeah. Gaia effect. Yeah. Uh, we will set one, set two. Attempt to go end phase. End phase one. Go ahead. Drop it. Yep. Let's go. Drop phase one. Sure. Yep. Mm -hmm. Special effect. Yep. Very close. Mm hmm. Ashton's here. Ashton's fine. Poppyless effect summon? I'll change it. And card item. Ooh. Chain abyss target called by. Chain droplet. Yo, that's crazy! These two? Yeah. Uh, let's go... <laughs> one, two, draw. Mm -hmm. One, two, draw. Uh, perfect, I think so it's possible. Yeah, it's about to say, guys. Uh, 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 you can pop the effect, target self, let's spell the proxy. Yep. You attempt effect, target your... Right, about two places? Sure. No, or something like that. Ah, I see. Um, that's shame, sorry. That's fine. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Uh, climber effects, so I summon two level ones from the grid. Yep. On it. Uh, yeah. Uh, tap two tap Go for. So. Link. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, from YouTube, okay. Mm-hmm. Climber. Yep. Link four. I'm Lil Whale. Mm-hmm. Link four. Zulanus. Yep. Uh, Zulanus with that. Sure. Five everything. Uh, summon. Summon. Summon, and I'll summon your all right of this over here. Uh, from Ethan effect, because something was about to summon to your side of the field, target, right, products, target, and destroy them both, then summon. Yep. Effect, summon. Effect. Here in the pack? Chain, and I'll target the Red Rising. Uh, yeah, you can have it. So, Onyx. Pop. We... Oh, is Red Rising do this against this run? Nothing? Nothing. Yeah, we'll just pop it. Sure. Uh, Battle Phase. Yeah. 3k? 2725. Look at Called by an Adroplet was crazy. Yeah. Yep, it's definitely going to be an uphill battle for us. We haven't even spoken about the likes of Voiceless yet. I have, however, put in the work and learned a lot since the start of the format. Of course, we're now about a month into it, uh, and we'll talk about that in the next episode. I believe, dude, the Synchro King. We're going to make it happen.